Hey, welcome to this video on casting, shadowing, constants, and static. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley. Okay, so I'll admit it, this video is kind of a mishmash of topics I couldn't find a home for. Doing a little cleanup. None of these topics are big enough to warrant their own video, so I'm just dumping them into this fruitcake. The first is casting. There is no implicit casting in Rust, but you can explicitly cast. To see what I mean, let's create two variables of different types and see what happens when we try to combine them. We get a compile error saying, hey, you can't do that. Well, not in so many words. So the quick fix is to cast either variable to the other type with the as keyword, followed by the type you're casting to. Now it compiles just fine. If I had cast the sum i32 variable to an f64 instead, that would have worked as well. Isn't that easy? Ah, but there's a catch. Let's see what happens to the decimal value when I print the combined variable to the terminal. It still compiles just fine, but in reality, we're losing data specifically the dot two value from the sum f64. Casting from one data type to another will often have some type of data loss. That's why Rust doesn't support implicit casting, meaning it doesn't automatically let you add different types together. Data can easily be lost, and it doesn't want to make the assumption for you. It makes you manually say, yes, I say it's okay to add these two variables together by means of casting a float to an integer. You have to take responsibility as the programmer that you don't lose data, or at the very least, be okay with the data loss. If you're casting from a lower version to a higher version, such as an F32 to an F64, you don't have to worry about the loss because the type you're casting into can easily handle the data. But if you're going from a higher version to a lower version, such as an i64 to an i8, or you're casting between different base types like a float to an integer, issues can happen if you're not careful. Okay, let's clean up a little. The next topic is shadowing, which in essence lets you define two different variables with the same exact name within different scopes. I'm not a fan of this one, but you're free to make up your own mind. Let's create a variable to hold some data. I can create an arbitrary inner scope with curly brackets. The inner scope is like its own sandbox, but can see and use variables from the outer scope just fine. I'll print out var a to the terminal to prove we can see it. If I create a variable inside the scope with the same exact name, that's called shadowing. The outer scope version is still maintained, but the inner scope sees a completely new and different variable. It can even be of different type. The inner variable has its own memory allocated and does not affect the outer scope variable. If I print out the inner scope variable, we will see that it's different than the outer. And at the end, I'll print out the outer scope just to show it's still intact and wasn't affected by the inner scope at all. Let's go ahead and run this so that we can see the results in the terminal. So you can see that the inner scope can see the outer scope's variable value of 10 just fine. And it can also create its own variable of the same exact name that contains the value of 20 and some change. But the outer scope variable retained its value of 10. I created an arbitrary inner scope with curly brackets, but it's really anything that would create a different scope, such as an if statement, a match statement, a loop, yada, yada, yada. Please use shadowing with caution. In my opinion, it just creates confusion, but if you have a use case for it, it's available. Okay, let's clean up for the next section. The next topic is constants. Sometimes you need a value to be available throughout the application and make sure it never changes. You can create a constant with the const keyword, 
capitalize the entire constant name, and it's pretty straightforward from there. If you forget to capitalize the name, you'll just get a warning so that you can fix it to sweet. I'll print it to the terminal to get rid of the dead code warning. Rust has several pre-existing constants available if you need them. For example, if you need the F32 mathematical value of pi, you can find that like so. I'm just going to print that out to the terminal to get rid of the warning for now. On a technical note, the constant is not treated like a variable during compilation, meaning in the compile program it won't actually have a memory allocation for your constant. What happens is the compiler will replace all of your instances of where you're using the constant with the actual value directly in the compiled code. This creates some runtime speed efficiencies because the running program doesn't have to go looking for the memory and retrieve its value. The value is just baked directly into the compiled code, so to speak. The constants that you create can be used throughout your application if you like. As well, if you're creating a libcrate, you can make the constant available for others to use. It's safe and easy to do. Since it will never change, there's nothing really that could go wrong. And last but not least, let's talk about the static variable. Sometimes you need a mutable global variable. It uses the static keyword, and like a const, the static variable expects to be all uppercase. Mutable static variables, also sometimes known as global variables, are so dangerous in programming that Rust doesn't allow you to just read and write from it willy-nilly. You'll get a compile error. As always, hovering your mouse will tell you why you're getting the error. To resolve this, Rust forces you to put unsafe around it anytime you're reading or writing to it. This is so that you as the programmer know that you're playing with some serious fire. Even if I try to print to the terminal outside of the unsafe area, I'll get a compile error. So let's put that into the unsafe area and you'll see it now compiles. The reason this is unsafe is because you can cause all sorts of multi-threading and memory issues pretty easily. Shared mutable memory is the scourge of non-trivial applications that use multiple cores or concurrent processing. Even in a single threaded application, chaos and confusion can ensue because one function changes the value while another calling function doesn't realize that's happening and uses that static variable as if it's stable. This is such a cause of bugs in programming that global variables are often described as evil. No kidding. It's simply not safe. But there are fantastic ways in Rust to make shareable data that is thread safe and doesn't require the unsafe static variable like this. In fact, it's one of Rust's main strengths. But that's a more advanced topic and we'll cover another time when we discuss multi-threading and concurrency. Note, you're able to make an immutable static variable too. That doesn't need to be wrapped in the unsafe block because it never changes, aka it's immutable, and there's no danger. But if you're going to do that, I recommend just use the constant. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley, and I look forward to seeing you next time.